And so the question really is, what do we do now? Um, we would normally have a, a, a break, but there's a fear that we'll run even longer over time. So what we propose to do is go straight into the second session to vote. But if people need, obviously, to have a bio break, please do so. But come back, because we're going to vote. We'll try and be a bit faster with going through the questions. And we'll get to lunch as soon as possible. So if you need to stand up and stretch, or you want to have a glass of water, please, now's the time to stand up. Maybe, you know. But we'll get to lunch on time is the idea, so that uh, we'll ask you to make that extra effort for us to make lunch on time, all right? So if I could invite maybe our next panel to come up at this stage. Um, and so that is uh, Professor uh, Linda Benreis is the uh, moderator for this session. Um, and uh, so Linda will be moderating the discussions with her. Our Stefano Catalani, who you heard intervene from the floor, who's uh, uh, with uh, corporate counsel with uh, DuPont in, in Geneva, Switzerland. We have um, uh, Giovanni Nicola Giudice, who I've had the pleasure of working with in the past, and who's with the, um, uh, the Milan Chamber of Commerce and a mediator as well. Uh, we also have uh, Giovanni De Berti, uh, a longtime friend, lawyer, mediator, arbitrator, uh, and uh, one of, I think, the, uh, the key people launching mediation in Europe, at least, commercial mediation. Uh, Giulio Palermo from La Live in Geneva, my own hometown. So Geneva is feeling very well represented in Florence today. Mike, your comment about Switzerland being, or Geneva being the Florence of, uh, of Switzerland, uh, we really are, are marking that today by bringing all our Geneva people here today. Um, we have uh, Michele Velo, uh, who honors us with his presence from the court in Palermo. And we have uh, Chiara uh, uh, Giovannucci Orlandi, uh, who is the uh, professor also uh, in ADR, uh, at Bologna. So um, thank you very much, the panelists. What I propose we do at this stage is let's go straight into the votes and let's vote. And then, um, Linda, what I'll ask you to do is after you go with your panel, come back. And we'll try and do it in 20 minutes if we can. So um, if you're comfortable with going through the questions in the other room in 20 minutes, we will do our discussions in 20 minutes and move on to um, the discussions a bit faster. So with that, let me invite you all to go to the questions. So if you are in the app, we are now going to go back to, um, and I need to find the page myself. So gpc.parvo.com, for some reason it got closed. And so I'm going to go to the core questions. I'll make it a bit bigger so you can all see it. And now we're doing the core questions for session two. So we'd like everybody, we had a good turnout, 80 votes, that's excellent. So let's try and get even more than 80 votes this time. All right, so again, the first question is, what stakeholder group are you in? And please uh, consistently use your stakeholder group um, as you vote, and then hit submit. And I will walk you uh, briefly through question one. So question one in session two. And again, now we're now talking about what providers. This is all about the supply side of the market. And please remember to answer how things actually are and not how you would like them to be in the future. We're still trying to understand the current situation in the market. Um, so please vote thinking along those lines. So what outcome do providers tend to prioritize in a commercial dispute? What about the providers now? What, do, what outcome do providers tend to, to prioritize? Uh, is it action-focused? Again, an injunction or specific performance? Is it financial? Uh, so, um, you know, damages, paying of money. Is it judicial, getting that court award, that judgment uh, written, um, applying a legal syllogism? Is it psychological? That's number four. That sense of having been heard, uh, fairness having been applied? Uh, is it relationship focused? Um, either ending or preserving relationships or other. So please, again, one, two, three, your first, second, third choices.
and I'll ask those of you to raise your hands when you're ready to move on to the next question. Not many people ready to move on to the next question yet, it seems. Yeah, it's okay. So, moving on to question two. We're now talking about the outcome. The outcome of a commercial dispute is determined primarily by what? All right? And again, looking at it from the perspective of, you know, the provider. Was it based on consensus? Was it based on culture? Which can be religious, it can be, um, as, you know, communal, community culture, industrial culture. Uh, was it based on equity, general principles of fairness? Um, was it based on rule of law? In other words, the clarity of applying the correct legal syllogism, the correct facts, and the correct law to get the correct outcome? Uh, or is it status? Deferring, for example, to hierarchies um, or to the status of different people involved in the process. So which do you think has the greatest impact on outcome? Once you have had submit, if you're ready, please actually raise your hands if you're ready for the next question. Not many people. A few more going up. Again, please do this at your own speed, but I'll, I'll move on because I see some people ready to move on. The question here is, in commercial disputes, what is achieved by having a non-adjudicative process? In other words, conciliation or mediation, and I understood that the gentleman commented before that they're not always the same, but in this context of putting them together, what is achieved? And please put number one if you think that's the most, you know, the top priority. Is it better knowledge of the strengths or weaknesses of the case or its likelihood to settle? Is it simply to compliance with uh, avoiding cost sanctions or meeting a contractual obligation? Is it three, improving or restoring relationships? Is it four, reducing costs and expenses? Is it five, retaining control over the outcome? Or is it six, trying to get some kind of tactical advantage by using mediation and conciliation? For example, getting a delay. So uh, again, please select what you think is, um, what do you think the order of priority in these answers? We've got question four coming up. I'll ask the question now, who's not ready to go on to four? Please raise your hand. Oh, that's perfect. Okay, so who's primarily responsible? So we're talking about the responsibility. Who's responsible for ensuring that parties understand their process options? And not only the options, but the consequences or the possible consequences of their procedural choice. So who's responsible for informing or educating the parties? Is it the adjudicative providers, judges, arbitrators, or their organizations? Is it external lawyers? Is it governments or ministries of justice who have that responsibility? Is it in-house lawyers who are primarily responsible? Is it the non-adjudicative providers who are responsible, mediators and conciliators, or their organizations? Or is it the parties themselves, but not the legal personnel? who are responsible for knowing their procedural options or other.
please raise your hands if you're not ready to move to question five. Good. So the question here is, what is the most effective commercial process usually? What makes them for the most effective process today, in your opinion? Is it one, using adjudicative methods only? Is it combining adjudicative and non-adjudicative in the same matter, number two? Is it three, just having the courts encourage the, the providers to reduce the costs uh, and, and time? So, so the providers are putting pressure to do it quickly and cheaply. Uh, is it um, using non-adjudicative methods only? Um, is it pre-dispute or pre-escalation processes? Uh, or the use of, for example, pre-contract, pre-dispute clauses in contracts? Or is it technology? Is technology a possible source today for getting to foster cheaper, better outcomes? So which of these do you think today is the most effective for getting a good, you know, an effective commercial outcome? And if you've finished, um, and I just want to check if our panelists have all voted. So then in that case, please, I would encourage you to go to the uh, room and to start your discussions. You will find the results, if you remember, in the menu by looking at that column saying results for today's event. And if you can come back in 20 minutes, we will be ready for you in 20 minutes in that case, Linda, if that works for you. So, um, so again, results for today's event, and you'll have the results there. Okay, the room is back on the corner on the left, and if Cara, Cara, if you can lead them to the room, that'd be great. All right, now, so for the rows of you arrested rest in, in the room, you know exactly what you need to do now. Um, we're going to do the discussion questions for session two. So I could ask you to click in the column discussion questions, session two. You don't need to be in the same groups of three, but it's not a problem if you do. Again, we're only asking the rapporteur to write in the boxes, but the rapporteur should reflect the discussions you've had in your groups. Uh, please start off by putting who's in your group by email. And what we're looking now is expectations. The first question is, what falls below expectations? What does not meet expectations? The second question is going to be, what meets expectations? And your third question will be, what exceeds expectations? So we're looking at providers, and we're saying, when are we unhappy with providers, in the first question? In the second question, we're saying, what makes us happy with providers? And with the third question, we're saying, what is it when you've had a provider who's really beat our expectations? What has made them that great? Okay? And you have roughly seven minutes, actually, no, we have uh, in total 20 minutes, so let's make it five minutes per, per conversation if we can, and in your small groups of three. Enjoy your conversations.